I guess uh, I'm getting a little hype. I guess I don't know. I don't know. I don't really feel it. I don't know what I'm really feeling right now about this fight. If I'm being honest. Uh, I know I'm not feeling the uh, $79.99 price tag, $80 for uh, Tyson Fury in a money grab in a, uh, as Floyd May Mayweather would say, legalized bank robbery. Uh, he's going to be taking on former UFC champion Francis Ngannou, for those who don't know, this weekend on pay-per-view for $79.99 from Saudi Arabia. It has a very good undercard. I'm digging the undercard, but the main event, listen, I watched this uh, media workout today with uh, Francis Ngannou right here. And when I say, like, after this workout, he's gassed the fuck out. Like, gas. Now, of course, people are going to say, okay, well, he has a puncher's chance. But if Tyson Fury re really, really wants to, he can make Ngannou not be, be able to hit him. You know, dude is that good. If he wants to, he can beat Francis Ngannou left-handed like he beat the shit out of Derek Chisora in their second fight. He beat Derek Chisora left-handed. Dude can fight on the inside using his body weight, that six foot nine between whatever he feels like, 260 to 280 80 pound frame of his. He can lean on him, no matter how muscular Francis Ngannou is. He's not used to having that type. Well, in mixed martial arts, okay, yeah, with the uh, uh, ground. Uh, he may have, you know, uh, I don't want to say advantages there, but uh, he's used to bigger guys pretty much using that weight against him. However, this is just a money grab fight. Let me tell you why I'm pissed off at Tyson Fury. Because I knew that this was always what he was going for after the uh, Derek Chisora fight. After the Dylan White fight. He did the Dylan White, obviously, because he wanted to keep his belt, the leverage. But he always wanted to... Like, he had no intentions on fighting Anthony Joshua or Alexander Usyk until he got this payday right here. Now, don't get me wrong, it's business, you know, and if a guy like me is paying uh, to watch Floyd Mayweather fight Logan Paul or fucking uh, John Gotti's son on Zeus TV, then who am I to complain about uh, uh, a guy who left the UFC on top, Francis Ngannou, who signed this big major deal with the PFL, ESPN's uh, uh, mixed martial arts organization, and facing our lineal uh, boxing champion of the world. Who am I to bitch and complain? But I'm going to bitch and complain because that's my right. I guess I don't really know how I feel. I'm not hype. I'm not going to be like, oh shit, when, when Ngannou and Tyson Fury are on their way to the ring. I'm not going to be here like, oh shit, like I got the goosebumps. You know? Nah. I'm going to be like, okay, how long is Tyson Fury going to carry him? Let's hear what Fury had to say. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. What a place. How about this? I'm on fire. I feel fantastic. I'm 35 years young and I'm ready to knock a motherfucker out. Get up! So their final press conference is uh, tomorrow. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to do a stream. I, I got to be honest. Th th this card, you know, I like the fights on the undercard. But I'm just not excited, you know? We have a pretty solid week in the boxing, too. Well, I made the Serrano's fighting in a uh, three-round uh, women's fight on a Friday night. That's a uh, MVP uh, Jake Paul card. Um, you have uh, Justice Hooney fighting as well on the... Uh, Oshaki Foster versus uh, Hernandez card, taking taking on uh, Andrew Tabidi. Here, let me pull up this uh, card here. Let me pull this shit up. But uh, we got a lot of things to talk about in this uh, hour or so that we're going to be online. Did y'all hear that Dwight Howard news? My gosh, fucking perverts, man. Uh, well, anyway, former um, defensive player of the year. NBA All-Star, Orlando Magic's uh, Houston Rocket, Washington Wizard, Philadelphia 76er, Los Angeles Laker. Uh, Dwight Howard has been having long, uh, like, years and years of uh, allegations and rumors uh, from being homosexual. Now, I don't give a fuck about you being homosexual. Do your thing. 
to stay away from my butt, stay away from my family's butt. That, that, that's your thing. That's your thing. Uh, but uh, uh, there's been rumors about there and stories about like him dealing with, you know, transgenders. And it's like, okay, if that's your shit, that's your shit. Well, anyway, he's now being sued because uh, he tried to, he's the freaks, just, just the whole freak, you know. So I'm glad it's finally out there in the air, you know, for people to understand. It's like anybody can be gay. You never know, man. You never know. But let me not get canceled. Let me stay on topic. It's the last thing I need right now is to get canceled. Yeah, complete sex deviant. Complete sex deviant. You know, and he got this whole posse of sex deviants, like that they cross dress and they like act as his bodyguards or some shit. Like it's crazy, man. I'm fucking 2023. Uh, so what was I doing? Looking at the boxing schedule. So as you know, of course you heard the news. Boxing is kind of uh, uh, we talked about it several weeks ago, going through a bit of a great reset. It's been going on for quite some time, where the networks. Are running out of money or not running out of money they're like hey listen we're not gonna be paying y'all for these bullshit ass fights no more y'all gotta start fighting each other it's sweeping through boxing not just pbc it's match room eddie hearn has made some comments about uh you know he's gonna be um letting fighters go you know it's like listen y'all gotta start fighting each other we gotta start letting you go the networks ain't gonna be paying for this shit and we ain't gonna pay for it um you know espn they've been keeping their shit hush 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 but they're having some issues, but at least we got some consistency since consistency there somewhat, but all across the board. And if you haven't heard, let me pull this up. Showtime boxing uh, is cooked and it was officially announced today on their Twitter page. It was officially announced. Listen to this shit. For 37 years, Showtime Sports has occupied an important position in the sports media ecosystem, delivering premium storytelling, bold and provocative documentaries and outstanding live production of the biggest combat sports in history. And we have done it all with the highest standards of care and quality. I don't know about quality. Uh, while last week's news is difficult and disappointing, for the remainder of the year, we will continue to deliver the highest quality, interesting leading boxing program that has established us as the unequivocal number one destination for the sport worldwide. And to finish what we started in 2023, perhaps the best year in our history. Steven Espinosa, president of Showtime Sports. It was a long time coming. Uh... Ratings for their regular Showtime events were getting lower and lower. Fucking 300,000, 200,000. 300, uh, while the fighters' purses are in the 500, 600, 700 million dollars. So you'll have one fighter who's guaranteed a million dollars a fight, $500,000 a fight. And that takes up a significant amount of the boxing budget. Compared to fighting, a, uh, they have to fight a fucking J or Q side that nobody never heard of that they can give them a little bit of money. Like, it's just, it's, it's just been a mess. So, to see that it's actually happening, like, I don't even know what it's going to be like when December gets here and January rolls around. And it's like, why do I still have Showtime? I still have Showtime now. And um, I've had Showtime my entire life. I've had Showtime my entire life. Uh, I was raised by my grandparents. So well, I'm not going to say my entire life. I'm going to say I don't know about when I was nine or younger. I don't know. But from nine years old, I'm a 40-year-old man now. I've had Showtime and HBO in my household. In college, uh, we had HBO. You know, we didn't have Showtime. But at home, I had Showtime. So to think that, damn, I don't watch Billions. I don't watch Yellow Jackets. What other shows do they got? What am I keeping it around for? I don't even know how much Showtime cost. But one thing for sure is I'm canceling that shit because I only kept Showtime for boxing. I didn't keep Showtime for no shows or... And don't get me wrong, I like Dexter, even though it ended on some bullshit. The New Blood uh, was all right. Ray Donovan, never gonna really get into it. But at the end of the day, those are past shows. You know, like Showtime just don't got it. You know, now I did have Paramount Plus and... It may sound a little funny, but I only got Paramount Plus to watch the new episodes of Beavis and Butthead. You know, 
Um, I think what else I get Paramount Plus for? I don't have it anymore. I canceled. Um, I think I only had it for Beavis and Butthead. But when you look at what's going on right now, for example, we've been hearing, oh, uh, you know, uh, PBC is going to head over to Amazon. Okay, that's fine. Sure. I would love to see. I pay for Prime. I can't imagine a life without Amazon Prime. I'm hooked on the Bezos. You know, I'm talking about right now. If I want to, I can order some gosh doggone dog shampoo. Dog shampoo. And, and it would be here by 10 p.m. No bullshit. Or 4 a.m. No bullshit. So I ain't never leaving the Amazon Prime. All my little nerd gadgets, all this shit, shit came from Amazon Prime. So I'm all for the Bezos. You know, yeah, I still get out to support the small businesses. But when I need some fucking uh, uh, HDMI to USB adapter, I'm hitting the Bezos. I'm hitting the Bezos. So, but, but to get back on topic, you know what my issue is? By the way, take your time out. Like the video, subscribe. Uh, we're going to be here covering that Fury versus Nganu shit. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm really interested in the undercard. Carlos Takam, Martin Bacoli, Fabio Wortley, David Adelaide, uh, Joseph Parker <clears throat> versus uh, uh, some keen guy. I forgot, forgot, forgot the damn guy's name. And um, what I'm going to be doing going forward is... I just haven't been feeling boxing lately. I just haven't been feeling it. I just haven't been feeling it. And now my channel's hit a point to where I got my channel to where I wanted to get it regarding um, uh, I'm able to put anything on the channel that I want now, not just boxing. But just boxing, man, it's just been kind of fucking me over. But anyway, uh, going back to um, uh, what I was saying about PBC on Amazon, I'm all for it. You know, for one, who's going to be the team? Are they going to hire Showtime people? Because all those people are being laid off. Are they going to hire? Because to, to, remember, they're going to need a whole production team. I mean, yeah, they got the football guys. You know, they got the uh, 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 NFL on Prime. But, you know, they got to have the the, 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 the the boxing infrastructure. It's going to have to be new commentators, uh, 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 people who do the interviews, uh, banners, graphics, all that shit. The biggest issue I have with PBC going to Amazon is once Al Heyman has a history, he gets some money, you know, and he takes care of his fighters. He do. He does. But then on the fans end, we start getting bullshit fights. We start getting bullshit fights. You know, so since Amazon has been known for spending hundreds of millions of dollars, just throwing it away pretty much, you know, on shows and movies and um, and just buying up everything. I'm pretty sure they got some money to throw at boxing. How much? We don't know. But my concern is if he gets an Amazon deal, no matter how much money it is, he's going to be like, oh, shit, we back eating. We getting everybody active here. I'm giving you a million dollars again, but you got to fight this bullshit, you know, like giving us bullshit fights again. Now, I'm not saying some people get me confused when I say uh, uh, we got we, we get like I don't say we get all bullshit fights. I say we get a lot of bullshit fights from PBC. I'm not saying we get and, and a lot of the fights that we want to see often take too long to make. Or when we see a fighter lose, they go on a significant long, significant layoffs or disappear or it's maybe not their fault, but get an injury to where their momentum dies off. A guy like Keith Thurman, for example. And where the hell's Leo Santa Cruz been? Danny Garcia. You know, Adrian Broner was having issues with activity, even though, don't get me wrong, he's fighting now more with Don King than he did with PBC over the last several years. He's got another fight coming up. Of course, he's got to make it to the ring. We all know about Adrian Broner. But it was a long time coming, and, you, and, and, and PBC can't be mad at the fans or the media for being like, yo, like, listen, y'all was putting on too much bullshit for so long. You know, how you mad at us? And be like, ah, y'all happy that, you know, Showtime, I'm not happy that Showtime boxing is out because at the end of the day, that's money that we're losing, you know, as media or vloggers or whatever you want to call us. 
but the content was piss poor. And you damn right. They had the best year that they have in, had in boxing. Why? The fights were on pay-per-view. It's not like they was giving these fights. We, had, we paid for those fights. We, that wasn't the business model for us to pay for pay-per-views every month. Even Steven Espinosa said himself at one point in time that he don't like that um, they try to structure their pay-per-views so that they don't hit the same billing cycles. To where they're closing out, giving us two pay-per-views in what, three weeks? Because the budget, you know, if, if they didn't have it, if they didn't have it, um, uh, like if they didn't have the money for the budget, for, like for example, to make a, uh, let's take Canelo out of it, uh, David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre. Those guys could be making a million apiece. We don't know how much they're making. But Showtime as a network can't support that along with the budget for putting together the event. I mean, the show, the broadcast. So therefore, they got to put that shit on pay-per-view. Um, David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant. Hey, and, and it's like, okay, I get it. You know, I get what you're trying to do. You know, keep the guys on pay-per-view. But at the end of the day, they're not the type of pay-per-view stars or boxers that can offset the amount of streamers. I can probably believe that for a fight like David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andrade, more people will stream than buy because the people that are going to be going to be watching are going to be more hardcore fans because Demetrius Andrade and David Benavidez don't have a, a strong casual audience. Yeah, they're trying to make David Benavidez the next Mexican guy after Canelo. You know, in the bigger weights, they're trying. You know, but he ain't there yet. He ain't there yet. So, what's going on, I guess we're waiting. Um, and let me see if I can pull up some things here. I'm guessing we're waiting for um, them to finish up the deal. But at the end of the day, you got no fight scheduled for any PBC fighter in January or February so far. Uh, November is next week. So, of course, Al Heyman is a smart man. You always hear people say that. He's got something cooking. But when it comes to Amazon Prime, for example, if that is where he goes, what is going to be the frequency of fights? Is it going to be two cards a month, three cards a month? What are these undercards going to look like? Is the zone, I mean, is, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, Amazon going to get rid of pay-per-view like are, are they going to be amazon pay-per-views you see what i'm saying there's a lot of questions there and then what if it's not even amazon what if it's somebody else you know we're here the zones in the running i would be interested in um pbc going to the zone why is because right now don't you know the zone is 27 dollars a month like 26 dollars and 42 cent if you don't sign up for all year round 26 dollars and 42 cents for that fucking app that got nothing on it, that, I'm going to start cussing. $26 for that app. So yeah, I would like PBC to go over there because maybe it would be worth it. But then again, the zone would probably fuck around and go up on the price. But at least we know if he goes to the zone, he'll have a little bit of a, uh, uh, a cap or a leash on him to where like, yo, like, no, you ain't spending all this money. Like, put on these good fights. But I don't see that because, for one, he would have to work with De La Hoya uh, and, uh, and uh, Eddie Hearn. I don't see that happening. I don't see. I think that Al Heyman would rather fucking die than to go over to work over from the fucking zone. No bullshit. It's a pride thing. Ain't nobody watching no darts or no snooker. I'm not watching that shit. But let me stop cussing. Yeah, the zone is uh, it's, it's 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 horrible, it's horrible, but um, we don't know what's going on. I mean, we do know fighters are in camp. We do know that. Um, there's supposed to be a card, a pay per view card in December, with uh, Danny Garcia, Iris Lindy Lara. We've been talking about this for months. Uh, at a catch weight of 155, Keith Thurman versus Amantas Stanionis. They got to get Keith Thurman his fight this year. 
And then um, we're also hearing that rumor of a Floyd Mayweather exhibition or some shit. You know, I'm guessing they just like, look, let's just let's just whatever money we got left in the budget, let's throw it at the end of the year. Just you know, just just get just get these cards out. But I would entertain uh, PBC. Uh, I don't hate me in, uh, Amazon on PBC. This is what Andre Berto said. Al Heyman's a bad man. Stay tuned. So, of course, and you got to think also, Al Heyman and Steven Espinoza knew months and months ago, probably last year, that, hey, listen, we got to put on a good year next year because we might not make it through uh, 2023. So, of course, Al Heyman, and, we, and, and, and we've heard uh, after the Fox deal fell through that he was going to be looking for a new deal. I mean, a new uh, 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 television broadcaster. Adrian Broner said it himself in fact let me see if i can find that video so i'm not one of them people that are going to be like i'm glad that they're gone and that's what they get and all that because at the end of the day people are losing their jobs and um i've never had any issues with showtime and i watch all the fights i pay for the network you know i used to be there at showtime events um so i'm not going to be like yeah i'm glad that they're gone but at the end of the day you're not going to be mad um uh at us you know you know like you're hearing people in the business, in the business that all oh, the fans should want. And it's like, listen, y'all put on these bullshit fights for way too long. You know, and then, come on, man. And then charging all these pay-per-views and you're supposed to think that we don't see nothing funny with that. Let me see if I can find this video. By the way, uh, Noye is going to uh, go for being undisputed champion again. In... Uh, just a little over a year crazy he's gonna beat the shit out of marlon Tapalos. that's gonna be on was it announced for december the 26th when was that announced for i forgot it's in my uh is that the day after christmas that's gonna be love waking up early i'm kind of digging that kind of digging it let me see if i can find this video I can find this video. I always said, whenever I get a chance, I'm always take shots at uh, Fred Hawthorne. Remember, he used to be sucking off Al Heyman cock, and now, you know, he's just a turncoat. You know, he got into some shit. He got uh, 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 smacked up by Kenny Porter, and now he's Al Heyman turncoat. I'm always going to talk shit about him. <laughs> I'm always gonna talk shit about fucking Fred Hawthorne, the politician. Let me see, PBC Broner, Heyman. I can't find this video to save my life. And then listen, how can you not uh, 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 look at the Al Heyman PBC situation and be like, all right, we're not supposed to talk about how he had NBC. CBS, ESPN with access to ABC, Fox, FS1, Fox Deportes, ESPN fucking Deportes, Spike TV, PBC on Bounce, Showtime, and I feel like I'm missing some. And, and we supposed to be like, oh, that ain't nothing. You know, he lost all those networks, but that don't mean shit. We're not supposed to talk about that. Like, bro, and it's like, wait a minute. Maybe it's, you know, like just simple logic. It's like if the same shit keep happening, maybe it's you, you know, maybe you got to change some things, bro. You keep losing these networks. Maybe it's you. I can't find this video, though. But basically, it was when uh, 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 Adrian Broner started talking about it uh, last year. About, like, look, you know, that Showtime boxing shit may be over. You know, we're going to be fighting on an app. He said that shit. I think that's the quote. I can't find that video to save my life. And then he went over to uh, uh, BLK Prime. Is this it?
Y'all hear that? Oh, wait, I'm tripping. Let me do this. Hold on, let me fix something real quick. A cake order, he suddenly stopped when he saw the address the because. Shut up. I'm only talking to you. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, Brian. I ain't with none of this shit they got going on. I feel like Al Heyman and Steven Espinosa is bullshitting because why is we doing a press conference on a computer when, when, when you got guys like they don't do Floyd shit on no fucking. Oh, no, I was on this, uh, on this, uh, joint. They made him apologize. That wasn't a video I was looking for. But yeah, it was a smart move. Uh, it was a smart move by uh, PBC to sign up Canelo and the rights to Crawford's next fight, if it is Earl Spence, uh, to boost up their uh, portfolio to be able to go to a network. Like, look, or go to another network to be like, look, we got Canelo. You know, we got this fight to offer you, you know? Because right now, them PBC guys have been getting their ass whipped. You know, well, Jamel, except Jamel Charlo, because he ain't even fight. He ain't even fight. And also, I knew I knew something was cooking because uh, when he started sending his fighters out and not making it hard, it just was like, all right, you want to go over to Japan and fight? Uh, uh, Inouye, sure. A few years ago, even though um, Fulton would have still made major money over in Japan, Al Heyman wouldn't have sent him. I don't have, no, I don't have any faith that he would have, unless he was controlling the promotion. I don't have, a, I don't have any... Uh, uh, fifth that he would have. I can't find it. Is this it? Hey, 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 guess what, son? Uh -oh. Hold on, son. Uh -oh. And then, and then <laughs> another, another thing is, not only you get forty percent, but you get forty percent on that Monday. Ooh. Okay. Not, not no six months. We gotta wait till the. The numbers come in, not no eight, eight, not no year. Yeah, I'm familiar. Monday, I'm familiar. That's what's up. Hey, Adrian, so by Wednesday, everything clear. My boy, hyped about hey, everything's it. Everything's clear. Hey, 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 guess what, son? He fucked that BLK Prime Up deal, too. So basically, he was saying, um, and it's been well known for some time, many boxers have talked about it, is that Al Heyman put his fighters on uh, payment plans, you know, and um, he'll give you some and then like give you checks over time. And a lot of fighters don't be feeling that shit. They be wanting their money up front. Uh, even uh, Deontay Waters ain't even right there. there it's on all access on Showtime. Agent Broner. You've had the opportunity to face right Floyd now. Money Mayweather and Saul Canelo Alvarez. For, Al for those that can't right see, here. Floyd Money Mayweather making his way into the building. I met uh, Al Heyman at uh, Khan versus uh, Algeria. Uh, he got these real long ass like skeleton fingers. You can tell like he used to hoop, like he can palm the rock. And he wear like these suits that you could tell they just been dry. He been taking them to the dry cleaner for like 15 years. Like you ever like iron something so much you take it to the cleaners to get like a sheen on it. Like he had one of them fucking suits on. And I was like, that's that rich motherfucking shit right there. That's that rich shit. It's that rich shit. But yeah, Adrian Broner's going to be fighting um, uh, November. I think it's November the 4th. I think it's November the 4th. Uh, let's talk about... The, oh, wait, here we go. Is this it? Still didn't find his damn interview. How about that? I've been searching and searching and searching. I ain't going to find it. I ain't going to find it. Adrian Broner was one of them people that turned down a whole bunch of money, too. Remember, he turned down that Rock Nation deal. You know, and the crazy thing is, Rock Nation ended up going belly up, but um, they paid out their fighters. Like, Miguel Cotto got, like, a significant payout from them. Um, you know, so Broner, even if he didn't fill his deal, they would have paid him out. Like, you know, crazy. Peter Quillen was never the same since he dropped his WBO belt. You know, he was never the same after that. Like, never. Adrian Broner never seen none of that money. This was him apologizing. Hey, man. I think you think you motherfuckers got it mixed up or what I was saying. 
when I said, you know, I, I didn't take a check for like six years and I haven't. What I'm saying is, I didn't take a check. But whenever I asked Al for money, he gave it to me. Let's say I'd be like, shit, I'm going to such and such flight in Vegas. I'm going here. I need 100000 for the weekend. I will have 100000 for the weekend. So, you know, I got, and then every day I was spending thousands of dollars. But it got to a time where it was like, I'm tired of asking you for my money. Just give me all my money and I'll do what I want to do with it. And then he came back and said, shit, ain't no more money. But I was spending money every day, so shit, he probably was right. I did. Crazy. Crazy. Blew all this money. Damn. Crazy. You know, Adrian Broner shit is kind of sad, though. You know, I'm glad that he's still boxing, and I'm hoping that his head is on his shoulders to where it's like, hey, bro, these are your last little few years. Even though these PD is not what they used to be, you better take these little fucking little money you're getting, and hopefully Don King ain't robbing him. You know, that's that's hopefully, you know, because Don King, he'll give you a whole bunch of shit then take that shit out your check with interest. With interest. So anyway, let's talk about these uh, cards. Let's go look at this Fury card. Let's go look at this Tyson Fury card. Tyson Fury. I'm going to be here covering this card. So even though I can bitch and complain all I want, it's my right. I'm going to be here covering this joint. Shit. I'm going to be covering this motherfucker. Oh, damn, they don't even got it on box rack. I got to look up Fabio Wardley. They don't even got this joint on box rack. Damn. By the way, the UK is too small for uh, three major promoters. But between uh, Frank Warren, Ben Shalom, and uh, Eddie Hearn. Because these all these cards have been atrocious. Them UK cards, all of them have been... You know, like they've been they've been horrible. Where the fuck is this? They don't even have it on. Are these joints exhibitions? Box truck don't even have them up there. Is everybody fighting an exhibition? Let me see Twitter. Well, anyway, it's going to be uh, Fabio Wortley versus David Adelaide. Joseph Parker's on that card. Uh, don't know how to pronounce his name, but the new heavyweight prospect Atuma Atama Atuma. I'll be checking him out. Carlos Takam versus Martin Bacoli. That shit, I don't know. It's, it's bullshit fights like that that get my attention. That get my blood kind of pumping. I'm also interested in the uh, Oshaki Falsa versus Eduardo Hernandez uh, card. That has uh, heavyweight prospect Justice Hooney taking on Andrew Tabidi. That's going to be on The Zone from uh, Cancun. Looking forward to that. I meant that Serrano was taking on Danella Ramos in a three minute in three minute rounds. Basically, it's it's designed for Amanda Serrano to knock this woman out in a way to lobby for three minute rounds in women's boxing. Uh, what else? Let me tell you something. Regis Progre and uh, Devin Haney's card is kind of growing on me. It's growing on me. But from what I've seen, there are other other cards on that date. From what I've seen, there's other cards on that date. The end of the year is kind of having some uh, log jams of uh, pay-per-view cards. Let's see. So let's go to... What else is that? Joe Cordina versus Edward Vasquez. Bleh. 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 Ew. Don't want to see that shit. I'm going to cover it. F.A. Jogba versus Joe, uh, Joe Goodall. Okay. Okay. Okay, but... Uh, let's see here. Jamel Having returns versus a Nick Molina. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let's see. Okay, I like Takuma uh, in No Yay. Versus Azurin and Cajas. Okay. All right. Uh, November the 15th. 
Shakur Stevens versus Edwin Edwin Dos Santos. De Los Santos. Uh, November the uh, 16th. That's a Thursday. Uh, Emilio Navarrete versus Robson Contical. It's a nice little card. Okay. Okay. Nothing really marquee in December outside of David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre. Hasn't been fully announced yet, but it's supposed to be uh, Ray Vargas and Brenda Figueroa on the card, along with Jamal Charlo and Jose Benavidez Jr., which I'm not a fan of because Jose Benavidez is a 147-pounder. Jamal, Jamal Charlo can easily fight at 168. So that's like, that's easy pickings right there. You don't get no stripes for that. Even though he's on a long layoff, I don't care. You could have got somebody in your weight division. I'm not trying to hear that shit. Uh, Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron. I like that fight. The undercard, not so much. Sky Nicholson versus Lucy Wildhearts on that joint. Me and Big Jake talked about it on the Aussie Boxing Podcast. You can find that on my T-Street Uncut channel. Uh, what else? Tom Schwartz, he had those woman beater allegations. I wonder if he beat them joints. Because he'd been, he been back. They were like brutal woman beater allegations. I think it was, I forgot what it was, but it was something like significant. Adrian Broner, December the 2nd, taking on a Chris Howard. Who the hell that is? The last guy he fought was a lawyer. So who's this Chris Howard bloke? Billy Hutchinson was a lawyer. He went 10 with him. Let's see what his box wreck is. They're putting that shit on pay-per-view, too. Let's see. This you? Oh, I did look him up already. Ah, oh, fuck, Adrian. Goddamn, AB. 18, this dude just looked like 18-2-1 with eight KOs. Chris Hurricane Howard from Crossville, Tennessee. Goddamn, Adrian. And see, look. Let me tell you about this, right? We did this before. So, listen. Don't let these resumes fool you. You see this guy right here? How he's 16 to know? Esau Kinda? Is that his name? Or is it Kinda? Esau is Esau is Kinda. Is that a joke? Well, anyway, you see how it says he's 16 and no? And, 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 and Hurricane Howard beating? Well, let's go look at his resume. I bet you it's some bullshit there. Look, now he's 18 and 6. See what I'm saying? They be bullshit. Look, this guy, look, he be the guy who was 26 and 51. Where's your family? So don't let, <laughs> don't let these undefeated records, records fool you, bro. These motherfuckers be on some bullshit. So basically, Adrian Broner, what's lower than a journeyman? I don't call boxers bums. I don't, I don't do that. I don't do that. But, but this guy, he's not even a club fighter. I bet you he worked like motherfucking at a steel mill or some shit. Fucking Adrian Broner. Anyway, let's get back to the schedule. Uh, December the 9th, you have Pro Gray versus Haney on pay-per-view. Liam Paro versus Montana Love. Andy Cruz versus Hector Tanahara. Ebony Bridges, she's going to be shaking some ass in San Francisco. At uh, She's going to be showing some ass. Uh, you know, at the weigh-in, so she's bringing that shit to the States. So remember, this fight's taking place at San Francisco. In San Francisco, so at the weigh-in, she's gonna have some shit on. Uh, she knows what she's doing too. So you know, we just you know let her watch. Uh, I like this card, but then you also have Jake Paul having a pay-per-view too on that date. I ain't gonna lie, boxing. Don't get me wrong. We got some solid fights. You know, uh, to close out the e close out the year, but ain't no needle movers, ain't no needle movers. You know, unless it becomes official that uh, Tyson Fury is going to be taking on Ulazander Usyk on uh, December the twenty third. If that's true, then you know we got something there. We got something. But let's go uh, take a clip from the uh, Ryan Garcia. Uh, uh, he had his press conference against uh, uh, Oscar. How do you pronounce his name? Duarte. I think I um 
I don't remember seeing this guy fight before, but I'm, his name sounds so familiar. They had their press conference today. Let's see here. Where you at? Welcome. We're not going to watch all of it. You know, just a few clips here and there. Any juice heads in the chat? Uh, I've been on creatine for a, a, a few weeks now. Um, and I'm trying to figure out, should I take it? Like, I know you take it before your workout, but should I take it afterwards too? Or should I, I'm, I'm thinking, I want to take it three times a day. Oscar. And I mix it with my protein. Like, I'm on some shit. I've been lifting like a madman. If you seen, like, I've gained an inch in my arms. Uh, yeah. Wild. Uh, let's see. Duarte. Who wants to face off? And the fighters will be facing off the first time. And now let's welcome to the stage the one and only King Ryan Garcia. 23 and 1, 19 KOs. December 2nd, live on the zone. Ryan Garcia, Oscar Duarte. They've been on the same cards before. But Saturday night, December 2nd, there will be the main event here in Houston, Texas. The first face-off between the two. Make some noise for Ryan Garcia, Oscar Duarte. Duarte. Okay, okay. Do it a couple more times. Take it away, Oscar. All right, thank you very much, uh, Beto. And hello, all, and welcome to our kickoff press conference for one of boxing's hottest attractions, Ryan Garcia and one of boxing's knockout artists, Oscar Duarte. On Saturday, December 2nd, we will see a collision course of these two warriors here at the beautiful Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. This 12 round I don't know how I feel about this fight. By the way, there was nothing on, uh, at this press conference of note, you know, really nothing. Outside of uh, Ryan Garcia not addressing Oscar De La Hoya, you know they got some beef. But Ryan Garcia is under contract for at least a couple of more fights. You know, PBC is after him. They would have loved to try to get him away from uh, De La Hoya. Um, but not really interested in, in, you know, this fight too much. I understand, you know, Ryan Garcia is coming off a law, so you kind of want to build him back up again. You know, that's how it works in this business. Um, they're entertaining the idea of him facing Tiafimo Lopez in that new Vegas venue. What the hell was that? That new Vegas venue, the Spear. You know, the big screen, you know, type deal. Um, before I get on board with that, I want to see how they handle a boxing event because I did look at some pictures. Here, let's go find some content on it. And I'm wondering how the logistics would work to have an event in there like from a fan viewing experience, like is it all going to be on the big screen and they fighting down below here, Vegas? Here it is, right here. This thing. They want to have a fight here. Vegas skyline. You've probably seen what it looks like from the outside, but tonight, ahead of the grand opening, Gotti Schwartz takes us inside the sphere. Right off the Vegas Strip is the future of entertainment in a way only science fiction could predict. Some calling it eye-catching. To others, it's out of this world. And when words fail, there's always an emoji. But this 366-foot shimmering exosphere is just the beginning because what's inside there is even more mind-blowing. What is your name? My name's Gotti. And I'm Jim. Bobby we and met Jim. Before. Welcome to Sphere. What Just beyond five today? Aura robots uh, is a taste really of the most are. baffling so sound system just... in the world. You're isolating got, each instrument. I'm isolating each instrument into a beam. All of this starting with a simple sketch from Jim Dole, owner of some of the most storied venues on Earth. I don't know. I'm interested to see how they would handle a boxing event. And by the way, I don't like no fucking robots. So big. And finally, inside the sphere within a sphere, 168,000 square feet of high-definition LEDs, 167,000 speakers, 17,000 seats, and 10,000 of them powered by haptics. It's impossible to just... Okay, so I'm guessing... It's impossible... Okay, so the ring would be right here. And you would be watching them from the... Like, you know, like, you know, I'm... 
I mean, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Okay, so this is the ring. The ring would be down here. And I'm guessing it would be projected on the screen, but the people are right here in these lower seats would have the best seats. And the people are higher up looking down on the action, but you're distracted by the skin. It just seems like a lot. It's to describe it, right? It's like trying to explain what a peanut butter and jelly sandwich tastes like to somebody who's never tasted one. This weekend, you 2 claiming the first residency, followed closely by another fully immersive experience called Postcards from Earth, all about this even bigger sphere that we all call home. Gotti Schwartz, NBC News. I'm not saying it wouldn't be cool. I think it would be awesome. I'm just trying to see how, uh, like, like what, like, how can they make the experience different from a regular boxing event in an arena? How would that big screen be utilized? You know, that reminds me of when I went on the uh, uh, the Back to Future ride, Back to the Future ride from uh, Universal Studios in Florida. You know how basically you're in like this stationary, fake ass DeLorean, and it's just all it is is moving around and rocking, but it's making you feel like you're in. Uh, back in time or like in the movie because it's this big ass screen. So how does that translate to a boxing event? I'm wondering. That's my question. But as far as Ryan Garcia versus Tiafimo Lopez, everybody's after Ryan Garcia fight. Even Devin, everybody wants to Ryan Garcia fight because that's the money. You know, the man is sitting on a million pay-per-view buys. That is the money. You know, but it all depends on who's going to get it. I think that if, if Ryan Garcia really wants the belts, because he says he wants to be a champion, you know, then he would try to go after Devin Haney, the winner of Devin Haney versus Regis Progre. As far as Tiafimo Lopez is concerned, Tiafimo Lopez is a big fight, but if he wants a belt, mm, well, Tiafimo Lopez got the WBL. And I think Tiafimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia is a bigger fight than Haney versus Progre. Now that I think about it, especially since it's not at 135. Oh, and by the way, I have Tiafimo Lopez beating up Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia is good. But um, I just don't see, you know, Tiafimo, Tiafimo's good. You know, we've seen time and time again, you know, how he'll look shit one fight, then come back and, you know, beat people the fuck up. Beat people the fuck up. Let's see, what else is going on? Um, and Noye versus Tapalos. <clears throat> I'm really interested to see what Inouye is going to do if he if he's going to go up to 126. Or, you know, will he actually entertain a fight with uh, Tank Davis at 135? I think that Inouye's cap is 135. I think he can move that far up, if I'm being honest. But then again, we kind of kind of we got to see how he will look at 130. For example, let's go look at the rankings real quick. And match up in Noye with the uh, 126 and 130 pounders. And tell me if you agree. So look. I will pick him to beat Oshaki Foster. I will pick him to beat Hector Garcia. I will pick him to beat Joe Cordina. Emmanuel Navarrete going to make him work. I will call that 50-50 right now. Mostly because the size and he will make him work. However, Navarrete would be made to pay for those long ass uppercuts he'd be throwing. He'll fuck around getting knocked out and he's got soft belly. He never shown to really be hurt from body shots. But Inouye is a masterful body shot, body puncher. I think he can take him out. I think he would take Navarrete. I think he could take Navarrete out with a body shot. That's at 130. He would beat Ray Vargas. He would beat Lee Wood. Lee Wood might knock you. Lee Wood can be getting beat at the whole fuck, beat up the whole fight, still come back. He would beat Luis uh, Lopez. And I think the next big fight for him is they're going to build for him to fight Rabisi Ramirez. After he beats the shit out to Palace at 122. It's really no need for him to stay at 122 pounds anymore, you know, after he wins. He should win. I'm not trying to count out to Palace, but I am counting out to Palace. But. When it comes to 126, uh, I think he will wipe all of them out, even even of Rabisi. I was at Rabisi Ramirez's first fight, by the way, uh, the joint he lost. I definitely think he could touch 130. 135 is iffy. Uh, but he can touch 130, and I think he can clean out 130. Navarrete he would have some issues with. But Cordini he can beat. 
Luis Garcia he can beat, and Oshaki Foster he can beat. Oshaki Foster's fighting this weekend, by the way, against Eduardo uh, Fernandez from um, uh, in Cancun. 135. Now, they, they all too big for him, even Tank Davis. You know, all of them. They're too big for him. You know, he can't. 135. This generation of 135 pounders, like, he, he don't have no business being up there. You know, and I can't even imagine how he would look physically at that weight. Yeah, I don't see 135. Is they they two? I don't see 135. Even Cambosos being a smaller 135 pounder on the smaller end, uh, he would be bigger than uh uh um uh and no he up at that weight. Anytime Loma would be the bigger guy, yeah, 135 is too big. So with that being said, we've been live for an hour now. Um I'm going to be here Friday covering uh, the Amanda Serrano card. And also tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern is the uh, Tyson Fury versus Francis, Francis Ngannou uh, press conference. So I expect it to be pretty cringe. But, you know, it's a Tyson Fury press conference. We haven't missed one in years. You know, maybe since like 2012, we, we, we've covered, covered uh, Tyson Fury press conferences. So, you know, we can't stop now. So we're going to be here tomorrow for that press conference. Uh, take your time, like the video, like the video, subscribe, and thank you for your patience as my channel has been going through a transition over the last several months. So we haven't given up on boxing, but just like boxing, we're going through our own great reset on the channel as well. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.